Hey guys, John here. Sharif. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner segment just for you guys. In Cupid's Corner, we cover everything from relationship tips, tricks, things that we've used in our past and our relationship that should help your relationship go to the next level or reignite those flames that might have been just simmered out just a little bit. So let's talk about some of the things that we get asked or we might think that might benefit your relationship. So the first one is uh, being able to dismiss problems. Now this goes over a couple different subjects, but the main one at hand is, is don't encourage people to interfere with your relationship. If I and Sharice went out somewhere and Sharice, let's say, had to go to the bathroom and I was sitting at a bar per se and some girl came up to me at the bar um, that I wasn't encouraging this girl. I wasn't acting like, A, I'm single, two, I might be you know, entertained by this girl or might want to get this girl's number or have some relationship with this girl. We don't encourage it. I don't encourage it. I don't think Sharice would encourage it. And you don't want that problem because if your significant other comes back or Sharice comes back, there could be problems and drama. Very serious problems for, for that girl, yes. Right, so you don't want that. So don't encourage uh, you know, another person to come up to you or encourage them to flirt with you. If they do come up to you, you should be able to dismiss it in a nice, courteous way. Hey, listen, I'm here with my wife, my girlfriend, my significant other. I don't think they would like that, and I don't think that I want to be a part of this conversation. Thank you very much, and go on your way. You know, that's probably the way that I would handle it. And Females would, are different too, though. I mean, you can easily just be like, eh, sorry, you know, I am here with someone else, or you can be like me and just be mean. But, I mean, that's just totally up to you, but what he's saying is basically not to encourage the behavior or have them sit next to you so that way when your significant other comes back they're trying to figure out why you are now sitting with another individual or allowing this individual to put their arm around you or maybe flirt with you a little bit yeah. because we've been in this scenario quite a few different times to be honest <laughs> sure. with you but well, maybe more than a few but I mean we've learned over time how to handle it and yeah. I mean we've been in that situation because Back in the day, I would say, what was it, 10 years ago, 11 years ago? Yeah. We were that. constantly in the nightclub industry with our normal day jobs, okay? So when you're in that atmosphere, a lot of different things happen. Mm -hmm. Whether there's guys or girls that are hitting on your significant other, mm -hmm. guys or girls that come to you and try to stir the pot about your significant other, saying, mm -hmm. oh, did you see so-and-so at you know the bar checking out your man or whatever it might be. You know, so there's little things that you can do to just avoid these problems because these things can escalate into not very, very uh, good situations. Absolutely. And it can always have, have problems with the relationship and can add problems. Mm -hmm. As far as, you know, that little thing could stem a big fight or argument, which could go and, and stem to different things of you guys breaking up or problems at home or issues that you don't even want to be involved in. I mean, who wants the drama? You know, some guys, you know, I've talked to some of my friends, they think it's funny and they'll, you know, they'll be going out with a girl, they'll have other girls come up and dance on them. And now they don't encourage it. They don't say, hey, listen, get away from me. But, you know, they're like standing there and they're like, oh, you know. It's letting like, it happen. Letting it happen pretty much <laughs> at that point. And, and that's just not good. You know, it can create insecurities mm -hmm. for your partner and could, that could stem different problems down the line in your relationship. Mm -hmm. So don't encourage other people to interfere with their, your relationship or don't let them. You know, that's another thing that she brought up was a good point. You know, people might see you happy or might see things that they want and they will come and they will try to stir the pot like Sharice said. Sabotage it. They will try to sabotage it. This could be a family member, this could be a friend, this could be a, some person that wants your significant other. So at that point, you really gotta watch your back, watch your six and make a really, you know, a true decision based on your heart, your feelings and your gut instinct. Mm -hmm. So that's a big one. So if you think that it could be true, what these pretty people are saying, then you could probably find out. But don't let them just interfere with what you're thinking about or have you start thinking about crazy situations or scenarios. Or that, jump off the handle and just That freak might out. not be true, right? Don't assume, always go to them and ask. Now, some people might not be truthful to you about that in the relationship, and that's when you'll find out other ways. And at that point, you can assess the situation and determine what you want to do. But don't just make radical thoughts or claims to make you have these problems, all right? So that's a big one, I it's think. Avoidable. Right? It's, it's avoidable. It's definitely avoidable. It's avoidable. And I promise, if you guys are on the same page, 
You know, you guys are gonna have a way better relationship. It's gonna be a stronger relationship because nothing can get in between you guys. That's what me and Sharice, nothing gets in between me and her, okay? So we know each other back and forth. We know what each other's gonna say. We bend these scenarios. It's tried and true. Now there might be some people out there that think, hey, listen, I don't care if people, you know, hit on my significant other, or that might be a compliment, or yeah, some such and such, whatever it is, it. right? And that's 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 fine, you know, different strokes for different folks, right? They might like different things. <laughs> but you know, for a majority of the population out there, I don't think anybody likes to see that happen. Uh, or it doesn't make them feel good. So at that point, you wanna make your partner feel secure, like we talked about. Now, not over secure. So at that point, like they shouldn't have to text you or call you a million times a day. But you should definitely make it special for your partner. Make them think that they're special. You know, we talked about a text message, a picture, might go a long way in the day. Hey, love you, honey, or I hope you're doing good. I'm thinking, thinking about you. you. Exactly. Right? These these are things that, you know, like, oh wow, you know, she's really thinking about me. I really appreciate that. You know, and at that point it's it's very in the moment. So it's non-predictable. These people aren't expecting you to text them but or give them a call or whatever it may be. But when you get that call or text message or picture, it might brighten your day or bring you out of a, a place that you were in a bad point in that day and bring you up to a higher point. Yeah, I agree. You know, so it, just, it, it, it will benefit the relationship a long, long way. All right, so that's another big one, I think. I've come a long way too because I used to badger John. I mean, badger him pretty bad. About yeah. every five minutes, he would get a message like, hi, how you doing? What are you doing? Hi, yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Let me yeah. call you. What are you doing? <laughs> so it's only because I was just so in love with John. <laughs> so, I mean, how could I not text him every five minutes? You know, be but, be yeah. secure. Be, be secure about relationships. Don't overdo it. Don't be overbearing. Yeah. Males and females. I've seen this on both, both ways. Don't be over jealous or overbearing. Okay, now... You know, there's certain things that you guys will set as you know, boundaries in your relationship and there's certain boundaries you will set over time because over time you guys will, you know, learn each other. You guys will learn each other. You guys will be in different scenarios and situations that you guys might have to set boundaries for going forward. Mm -hmm. All right. So the biggest thing is, is to talk about these boundaries. Make sure you guys are on the same page with these boundaries. Communication. We've, we've mentioned this a, a lot in these, especially in Cupid's Corner. Mm -hmm. I think it was one of our first first or second episode mm -hmm. we talked about communication mm -hmm. and how important it is because everything stems from communication. Mm -hmm. But once you set these boundaries, you guys are on the same page. As long as you guys stick to that game plan and stay strong, I think you guys will be really, really well off and, and the relationship will flourish more and more as far as that goes. Absolutely. Right? I agree 100%. Yes. So don't be overbearing. Make sure you're showing your partner affection and love, right? In both scenarios, you know, whether you're out in front of in the public or at home, you guys want to show this this love and affection. Um, and don't be scared to talk to your partner. Communication. Communication is key, I'm telling you. It's very, very important. You've got to be able to talk about it. If you can't talk about it, or you feel like you can't talk about it, then you need to sit down and talk about how you can't talk about it. Right. Now, if you guys can't get past that part, yep. then maybe we should reevaluate some of the things in the your situation and your relationship, because it just might not be meant to be. Yeah, not every relationship is going to work out. We know right. that, okay? Especially with the population out there right now. I think we're over a 50% divorce rate. That's, that's crazy. I mean, it's how could you not be rate. at a 50% divorce rate? Let's be serious, okay? Because yeah. now I want to bring this up. You have like the Tinders and the chats and the snaps and the this, this dating site and that dating site. And you can swipe on all kinds of devices and get to people and places and yeah. hang out in the corner. I'm, it's, it's like, honestly, it could just call me old school maybe. But I mean, there's a lot of different ways out there to, you know, be doing your own thing on the side or whatever it might be. So that's that could be very well why. A little bit anyway why there might be such a high divorce rate also when we were growing up you know me and John don't come from broken households so both of our parents were married until he was 21 right and I, both of my parents were married until I was 21 yeah. so we grew up with both of the parents in the household at the same time which makes a big difference obviously for the kids and everything like that yeah. but I feel like back then if your parents were divorced it was like oh my goodness your parents are divorced? That is like, that is insane. What do you mean your parents are divorced? Nowadays, it's like your parents are together? What? Yeah. No way, your parents are together? Yeah. Which parents are together? I've already had three stepmoms. 
So, I mean, I don't know what's changed in this past, like, 20 years or 30 years or whatever it is. Yeah. But I feel like it's, like, that's the norm now. But it's really not. That is not the norm. Like It shouldn't be the norm. I mean, everybody, like I said, has to go through their situation scenario. So, this isn't for everybody. Some people might have had to get out of a relationship or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. But, you know, really sticking and staying strong in the relationship, you know, sticking it out. You're... you're, you're making yourself a commitment mm -hmm. and you're making the other person a commitment and in marriage you're making vows you're, you're making vows and, and a lot of times in front of god okay depending on where you did your ceremony or how your wedding went down but these vows should be taken sacred these are sacred vows that you're saying out loud and you're saying to this person you know you should be true to these vows you know make it a point and make it a priority to stick to your promise to that person you know whatever it may take you you exhaust every possible option that you can with that person to make it work. Now, sometimes that other person might not be giving that same effort towards you, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you can sit in your mind and look at yourself in the mirror and say, listen, I did absolutely everything I possibly could to help and save this relationship or to make it better, then you can sleep well at night and look at yourself in the mirror. Some people just are looking for the easy scapegoat or they're getting uh, interference or they're getting persuaded by possibly or possible something from the outside. Like she said, technology is a great thing, but it could be a bad thing too. And we know because all these, these, these little hookup sites and dating sites and sliding people's DMs and stuff like that. <laughs> so that brings us to another point. Like, you know, don't encourage this behavior. If, if somebody inboxes you in your DM and starts hitting on you, and you talk to them back or you encourage that, they're gonna think it's okay and they're gonna keep doing it. Now, if your partner finds this, they're gonna be insecure. They're like, what's going on here? And how many other people have you done this with? Exactly, if you did it once, how many other times have you done this? You've only might have done one message, but it does open the door for that thought. And then when those, when those thoughts go through people's minds, they sometimes create crazy scenarios in their head that they think is true <laughs> and it really isn't true. But you gave them that ammo to really think like that. So if you don't give them the ammo, they shouldn't think like that. And if they think like that and you haven't given them any ammo, mm -hmm. then you should maybe possibly reevaluate the situation or scenario or relationship that you're in mm -hmm. because it might be unhealthy for you. And that's another thing. Don't stay in unhealthy relationships. Yeah. You know, there's healthy relationships, there's unhealthy relationships. You guys should know better which is healthy and which is not. So really, that's the best of tips and tricks that we could possibly give on these scenarios and situations. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as don't encourage people, right? Make your significant other feel special. Don't be overbearing to them, right? And watch technology. It could be good and could be bad. Let it work for you and not against you. Yeah, technology. That's a big one. Yeah. And you know, we've got to make sure that these girls don't get dragged out of the uh, bar by their hair. That yes. was terrible, terrible, terrible situation. So, yes. Please take our advice. Take the advice, run with it, apply it to a relationship. I guarantee it will help it for sure. If you guys got any more feedback, you guys got questions, you guys would like us to talk about a certain subject. Please write us, DM us, let us know. We'd be happy to help you guys out in any way, shape, or form, uh, especially from the experience that me and her have. We have a vast experience for love, relationship, as far as our business, all together, 24 hours a day. So, you know, if people are going to probably kill each other, it would have probably been me and Cherise. Yep. Now, this might not be the optimal situation <laughs> scenario for most couples out there, but it works for us, and you might have a scenario that works best for you. So that's really what it's about. Make sure you're happy, make sure your partner is happy, and you guys will have a happy life together. I agree. Yeah. So I'm John. I'm Cherise. We appreciate you guys for tuning in to Cupid's Corner every Sunday, 11 a.m. ABC. Please follow us on our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and don't forget YouTube, guys. Please subscribe. You guys will see all different types of videos of me, Cherise, Titan Medical Center, and all the good stuff we have. See you next Sunday. We appreciate it. We'll see you then. Bye.